This is ELH 4X4 doing stuff. Today we're working on a 93 F150 XL 4x4, 5.8 liter. Chief complaint is noise in the front end. And after a road test, I had determined that the uh, front suspension is worn out as well. Uh, coil springs. So, come on along. Visual inspection, you can see that the passenger side is lower than the driver's side, which uh, tells me that the coil spring on the passenger side is weaker than the one on the driver's side. And after taking it for a test drive, I, I couldn't uh, hear any knocking or clicking or noise in the front end. But after taking the wheel off and inspecting that, I did find that the upper ball joint is wore out. And we'll take that side off and we'll get to it. So, we got everything ready here. And this is, you can see that movement in the upper. And that's where uh, caster and camber is adjusted so we have to reuse these parts because a new ball joint doesn't come with that so and we also have to kind of mark where these um, I guess they would be eccentrics we'll take a look at what they look but we got to keep in mind where they were at uh, where they're positioned at on the vehicle that way uh, we can kind of get a ball parked um, and then when he takes it to an alignment place, they won't have to make a, a major adjustment. So, all right, let's get to it. So we got a, there's a strap holding the coil spring in, a mounting bolt down at the bottom that we got to take off. We're going to have to get the tie rod end taken off, brake caliper taken off, separate the hub from the axle and get that out of the way because we're going to have to drop the whole knuckle uh, off in order to, and both the bottom and top ball joint, we're going to have to break that loose and take the whole knuckle out to replace the ball joint. So that's fun. But uh, at least on the other side, all we got to do is just the ball joint. I had soaked the uh, mounting hardware in some penetrating oil, so hopefully that doesn't fight us too bad. Or at all. That's what I'm hoping. on this tie rod end nut we got 13 sixteenths a snug 13 sixteenths and for the ball joint it's an inch and one eighth oh boy Whew. And we're going to have to mark the uh, position. There you go. There we go. 
You get the point. We gotta take this off. There's some snap rings. And then we will be able to slide the uh, rotor off. Really, that's just to. free the axle up so we can get in there and, and drop the knuckle off. And then there's that uh, locking axle nut. All right, now we just remove this uh, spindle with the axle going through. Yikes. get an impact socket. Those uh, mounting nuts are 11 sixteenths. Yeah. All right. I'll save you the drama. All right, inspect the needle bearings inside, make sure that they're all there, and we'll uh, hit that with a light coat of grease. All right, this will give us enough play This will give us enough play to actually be able to drive everything down. Right, the axle here. Let me see if I can actually rotate it to where when we hit everything down, it will give us room.
upper ball joint. On the eccentric, mark here. And right here, and we'll just line that up. We'll get the tie rod end off. Lower ball joint. Well, it looks like we're going to have to pull the whole axle out to get to the actual hardware to the lower ball joint. Okay. wonder if we can, if that's just a slip fit. It is kind of moving. I'll let you know. All right, well, you can see. It's a slip fit. See what I'm working with. I'm going to hit that up with some penetrating oil. And uh, yeah. All right. All right. We had a quick little sprinkle show up. Uh, nothing too bad. I think it stopped. So I may pull the the tarp back. But take the tie rod end off. And that'll give you better access. To the lower ball joint. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to put a cheater bar on that. That's crazy. But we got the upper, upper loose. Yeah, I'm gonna put a cheater on that. Yeah, it wasn't bad with the cheater on it. All right. All right, so we got the lower bolt or nut out. I right, just put a extension on an impact. I was able to get it in there with a U joint, universal joint. Now we got to get this collar out because it's kind of pinching the upper you can see that. Come on. There we go. This is pinching the upper ball joint. So we'll free that up. I sprayed it down with some penetrating oil. Same with the, the lower. Got that uh, sprayed up with some penetrating oil. And then we'll just get a chisel and knock that out. Alright, headphone wearers, uh, put your ears on. Or turn your volume down.
telling you it took a lot more than what I'm doing right now to break that free. Sorry. Now I can tell you that the uh, the new ball joint does not have any of this stuff, so you have to salvage it. All right, so you can see the eccentric built into this collar. All right, so when you rotate it, it's going to change your caster and camber just a little bit. But I'm suspecting that this would have to rotate as well because there's, it's keyed. And our opening was towards the front. So that's where we'll put it. All right, now we got to break this bottom one loose so we can drop the whole knuckle. I'll put the nut back on to protect the threads. Because we have to reuse this ball joint. I'll see if I can't find a, uh, a drift long enough. All right, so there we go. I just used the old axle I have off of uh, a motorcycle. You just need a, a drift long enough to get in there and, and uh, tap on it. And then eventually it'll come loose. So we'll take it bench side and uh, see what we can do. All right, right now we got it soaking with penetrating oil. We'll take a look at the new one. to see which direction that this thing comes out. And it is greasable. And for whatever reason it has a snap ring which I don't see in that one. But it looks the same. All right, so it drives out that way. So I guess if you have a good attack angle, can probably pound that out with a, a hammer. Let's 
see if we can Let's see if we can do that. Put some eyes and ears on. All right, make sure that the the collar will pass through. That way, you're not working against yourself. And see what we can do. All right, watch the edges. And if you have to, we could touch it up with a file, but it is working. get a longer drift or a chisel. There. You see this one has a slot too. So that's reassuring. get this edge cleaned up so without melting too many brain cells trying to figure out how to fit the ball joint press in there because the screw portion of it has to go this way in order for it to work real easy but the lower ball joints in a way I'm just going to stack it up and uh, tap it in Try to. So I moved on to a socket because I was losing too much of the uh, energy, I guess, was being dissipated through all the multiple different. Um, sleeves and adapters and whatnot so as soon as I went over to the solid socket it it's seated and you got to make sure that the collar seats down all the way all right so what we're going to do is we're going to slap the uh, boot on And then put it off to the side because we have to get into the lower mounting bolt for the spring. All right. Forgot about the springs. This was a job within itself. But hey, it's done. Hard part's over. And if I'm not mistaken... This part goes inboard away from the rotor. So this is when you overfill it with grease, it'll come out and you don't want it going towards the rotor side. So you want it to go inboard. And it's, it's a rubber seal. It's, it doesn't have a metal. Well, it does. All right, so we got to actually seat the boot over top of over top of the ball joint.
toast, we just gotta seat it on the back side there. Go without ripping the boot. We'll put this off to the side and then we'll continue with the uh, coil springs. Put the lower nut in. That'll hold it up for us. Alright, I lied earlier. I said that this part was facing out. Um, we actually got a dimple on the other side. So, there we go. That's why we mark things. I knew I marked something and I was like, well, how can that, if there's a, a slot on the other side, then how was I able to mark it? So, I'm going to figure something out. I don't want to get this bottom. bottom bolt on. All right, so I'm going to use the impact. All right. Look at that. We got more room now. Is that spinning? I think that's spinning on us. to do is put the jack underneath that. Of course it's a different size. Half-inch ratchet. Well, all I did was just take it and headphone users, uh, heads up. Just drove it home a little. There we go. Now we can get the. I mean, I should probably still get a ratchet, but... And that line on top also points to the cotter pin hole. So you can line up the castellated nut. That thing was down a little bit further too. Let me see if I can drive it home. That made a difference.
for the cotter pen. There it is, right in front of my face. Now I can get this bottom nut taken care of. All right, we got the bottom one snugged up, well tight. And we could put the tie rod end on and then slide the axle in. So let's do the tie rod end. I gotta chase these threads. I almost forgot it is a greasable fitting. So we need to put the Zerk fitting in and then load it up with some grease. That's so nice that the the hole for the fitting is threaded because before they you know you had to kind of self-tap it with the Zerk fitting and it just it was a bad day if you didn't have it lined up right there we go I'll go jack that with some grease See it filling up. I don't want to overfill it. All right, let's get the tie rod put on. Now we got to line the axle up uh, inside the boot and push it back onto the boot seal. Right here, we'll apply some some grease. Get some on the spline. All right, 
where the seal goes so it slips right back into that groove all nice and easy. All right, that's fun. All right, I'm gonna get that slid in. All right, not too bad. Uh, it would be super easier with two people. But all I did was I rotated the axle so the splines would kind of drive themselves into the seal. And then you gotta get in there and line up this axle with the output shaft from the differential and get those lined up and slide the spline inside that coupler and and then drive it in but we got it not too bad all right then we'll start putting the we'll put the nose cone on and we had the key the keyed part of the nose cone was facing up. We'll put a little coat of oil, or not oil, but uh, some grease. Clean that part off. Wipe everything down. put oil on that to keep it from rusting. Hey, you should have some old reference marks where where the cone was last and you got this dirty area that matches that so well definitely went on a lot easier than it came off get that snug down and then uh, I'll bring it back to assembling the hub
All right, we got that all tightened down. I'm sure there's a torque spec, I don't know. We'll grease, it, grease this back up and then put the hub back on. Now would be a good time to repack your bearings and all that, but we did that not too long ago when we were doing rotors for this vehicle. Make sure that the bearings are facing the right way before you put that in. Then we put, remember, that key, keyway on the top of the spline matches up with this. So when we put that, the spline is going to be over here now. seen enough all right so we got it snug down as tight as it can go all right and then there's no uh, it doesn't bind but then there's no play in it to where you know uh, you can hear it slopping back and forth all right, let's see if I could remember how this stuff goes together. Spring. This goes in. And then that, oh man. And then the, uh, that outer clip. All right, then we put our spring in. This part, whatever you want to call that, I don't know. But make sure that the recessed area is facing out. Your little retaining screw.
Okay, you don't have to kill it on. Snug it down. Then your C-clip. Locking hub. And the six retaining bolts. Test it out. Look at that. You maintain these hubs, these things work pretty good. You don't junk. Just like anything. And this isn't an off-road vehicle, this is a, a work truck, so. All right. That's how you do an upper ball joint. All right. So this bolt is, or nut, is a inch and one eighth. And there's a hole up top that you can drop the socket down inside. And you'll be able to fit your um, breaker bar into that. I'm going to go get a ratchet. I know I said that before, but this time I'm for real. All right, I was fortunate. Oh, well, now this isn't going to fit in there. But I was fortunate enough to um, It broke loose with the breaker bar, so it wasn't anything too extreme. I mean, I'm sure if you had a long enough extension, too, you can put an extension up there and probably take it off. But uh, so far, this is as working.
That wasn't bad. That wasn't bad at all. We'll get this retaining strap out. Upper retaining strap. If that's what you want to call it. I don't know. Drop it down into the spring. Uh, yeah, there is a slot. I'll show you. All right, I may have to take the support, the axle, and take the shock off. That way we can lower it down. Matter of fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'll get a setup for that. All right, I got the axle supported. Take the hardware off the shock. Lower the jack down ever so gingerly. All right, that's that mounting bolt. It's double-ended. It goes through, and that part. Here's the perch for the bottom spring. Clean it off. All right, so refer to the instructions. They say that the close coils go up. I must put it in upside down. But the bottom the bottom wouldn't go around the, the upper perch. So we'll get the strap put back in. Lower hardware put back in.
guess I could get a get an extension for that. Jack it up a little bit to get the shock mount hardware tightened up. that extension. All right, we'll get this upper shock mount tightened up. The inner shoe goes on first. go and just button the tire back up and uh, torque the lugs I think it was 105 I'll have to look it up either 95 or 105 but not bad main thing is is uh, no, I don't really don't know what the main thing is just getting it done all right, I'm gonna get this wheel buttoned up. All right, so we finished up doing coil springs and an upper ball joint on a 93 F-150 4x4 XL 5.8 liter. And uh, you see how difficult that was to, you have to take the whole steerer knuckle off and all that, but the coil springs were reasonably easy you just got to deal with um, the amount of corrosion that are going to be on the fasteners. But other than that, I thank you very much for all of the views. The uh, new subscriber, Mike, shout out to you. Appreciate you, brother. And uh, you guys have a blessed Thanksgiving. And until then, this is ELH4X4 doing stuff. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.